Dear Diary, 24th September 2012 Hinduism and Uniformity A very dear, loving and staunch atheist Hindu friend. You have to know him to know what I mean by those words. Posted on Facebook. Hinduism is so plural that it doesn't know what it is. They can't be anything but pluralist. A complete set of crazy superstitions that nobody understands. There's a strong element of truth in what he said. However, I cannot put myself down on his side of the argument here. I'm very clear that Sam Harris is right when he says, paraphrasing, that all dogmas are not equally evil. Thus, I cannot accept running down of Hinduism's plurality, though I do have problems with many other aspects of Hinduism. My response to him. But dear, Hinduism cannot know. Knowledge is the preserve of individuals and only through them of the collective. Every Hindu knows what he or she stands for. And that is what Hinduism respects, even expects. True, this would mean that those who do not bother to or cannot think much are left with a complete set of crazy superstitions. But why should they or anyone else worry about it? We must encourage them to become evidentialists or at least bring a strong dose of it in their daily life. But apart from that, where is the problem? One must be free to be as cuckoo as they want to be so long as their freedom ends where others noses begin outside of evidentiary fact for example while connected to ground putting a finger in a live socket gives you a shock or accepted conventions for example 220 volt AC electricity at 50 Hertz will be supplied within the territories of the Republic of India. There is little need for the unification of thought and belief. Why? Because there is no fundamental axiom that is provable. Not that Muhammad was God's prophet. Not that Jesus was the son of God, not that there actually is a trinity of gods sitting somewhere in the clouds, not even actually that the material universe is all there is to existence, but that last presumption is different in the sense that it is the only one necessary to keep living a life the only kind of life that we so far know, desire to and can live. For this same reason of non-availability of proofs, for the fundamental axioms of any thought system, some wise Hindu person said that Hinduism has 33 crore, that's 330 million gods. I am quite willing to pretend that this statement came around when the population of undivided India or the population of Hindus or the total world population or a figure tending to infinity in people's minds was 33 crore. Quite simply, it says that every person is their own God and free to accept that responsibility or refuse that 
and call any other entity their god. This was an impossibly empowering and responsible concept for the foolish Abrahamized elite. After all, the Muslim men, which is the only kind of Muslim elite, have always asked that their women be veiled refusing to take even that little responsibility of not raping a woman when they see a part of her skin. Similarly, the Judeo-Christian elite have always believed that our only home, our planet, is a gift from their non-existent God to exploit it the way they want it. No evidentialist, in other words, atheist, Hindu, tribal, polytheist, Jain, Buddhist, Taoist, or for that matter, any non Abrahamic faith tradition would have initiated the rape of earth as easily as the Abrahamics did. For Abrahamics read Judeo Christian, but Islamists have not ecologically raped the earth as much merely because they were busy raping their own brains in the interregnum. Unfortunately, some Hindus, overawed by the powers that Abrahamification brings with it, chose to deny the real strength of Hinduism and started the project of Abrahamizing Hinduism you know, Hindutva and stuff. Hinduism, on the other hand, is the living proof that the Jain philosophies of Anekantvad and Syadavad work. By that token alone, Hinduism could be deemed a thought system worth treasuring. Of course, in view of the fact that the thought systems that we do treasure are almost all non-evidentialist. But why? Why should Anekantvad and Syadavad be worth treasuring or a living example of those principles, those philosophies? be worth treasuring because let us be under no impression that it is the uniformity of the human species that is responsible for our success on this planet now it has always been our mavericks that have opened doors for us which the vast uniform i might say majority did not see existing even when opened for them. Uniformists are the baggage that pioneers carry. When you pioneer something, they oppose you. When you pioneer something, they oppose you. When you succeed in mainstreaming it, they sideline you. Which is also okay, because a path breaker is always happy breaking paths not smoothening the extant paths. You must know this more than anyone else. You have lived it and continue to live it. Darling, Anekantavad rocks, Abrahamification sucks. <laughs>